Hi everyone, it's Mark back here again. I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network. We're up to about 85,000 members across our four LinkedIn groups now, which is great. One of which got an award for being highly engaged. Um, I keep, my aim is to, to fill up Wembley Stadium. That's the plan. Um, so we're nearly there with 85,000. Um, but this is the best fun bit for me because I get to meet um, our full members. So I'm delighted that Fanita Amran has joined me today for a quick chat so that I can introduce her to you as one of our most recent full members. So Fanita, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's my pleasure. Now, you're all over theatre, I think it would be fair to say. Um, and I've been reading through um, your story, which is fantastic. And in fact, I'm just going to share the screen so that everybody knows where to look. Well, if I go home here, here we go, ready to share the screen. So um, if you'd like to learn more about Fonita, she's got a wonderful website that's got fantastic case studies and a whole timeline in it and lovely pictures of the work that she's been doing. And that's at fonitaamran.com. So wherever this profile in this video appears, you'll find a link. But we thought we might use this as the kind of, okay, what's the Fanita story uh, basis? So I'm going to click on about. Um, so Fanita, um, hello. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> My face got um, cut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here you are, um, a theatre director and producer with a passion for pushing social boundaries through the performing arts. Now, I did notice the phrase here, dark undertones, and I think you <laughs> rather like dark undertones. So you're yep. currently in Glasgow, you're currently based in Glasgow in Scotland. Your theater adventure started in Indonesia in community theater with a, uh, a very successful adaptation of West Side Story, which I want to hear more about. But uh, tell us a little bit more about what drives you in, in, in theater. Um, I think my passion for theater and for, you know, performing arts in general um, started when I'm really, when I was really young, actually, and um, I've always got into, uh, one, I've always daydream a lot and also trying to write and then also write poetry and write, um, uh, you know, what we call a mini um, theater production that in Indonesia we uh, we we have this sort of um, storytelling way of uh, of doing a theater uh, with kids and everything. Um, so um, I, you know, when I was in my elementary school, I actually, without knowing and without really understanding what I was doing, I kind of like write um also act and direct <laughs> a piece mm -hmm. uh with my school mates um and um it was basically just for fun but uh from then on I felt like this is it felt so very fulfilling so I I, I kind of like hang on to that but unfortunately was uh, being in an art um is not so much a uh the thing that is being approved by my parents or my family because I grew up in a quite traditional and um restricted to have a traditional uh Islamic values um so uh, my parents believe that uh when uh when a woman or when a girl uh doing arts on them being stand out or being weird or anything because daydreaming is actually being considered as weird <laughs> uh, uh, turned out to yeah. be um and um that would bring um me and my parents afraid that it would bring shame to uh to the family so from the young age I was like um okay I thought that my family's words are gospel. And so I basically just followed along, not knowing there's, there's always a void that kind of like wanted to always push me to my 
um, artistic inclination, but it's always, okay, no, don't be weird, don't do that. But um, so and it, it was always like that until uh, back in 2014, I met uh, this really wonderful community of um, musical theater fans, basically Indonesian kids um, who watches Broadway shows from the YouTube um, and just, you know, uh, listening to uh, Broadway songs and then they get together and they basically, you know, um, you know, do, do, do theater for fun. And then that's when uh, the theater the kind of uh, the community theater, the young, the youth community theater of Jakarta performing arts community was being developed. And I was so uh, lucky that I got involved in that because I think I learned everything that I want to know about theater from there, just by talking to people, just by uh, talking to the like-minded uh, uh, kids. And we, we were, we were really, we were being limitless basically because we 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 have no cares in the world as in like oh we have to do this we have to do, we don't we we don't put a limitation in ourselves kind of thing so we i learned over there i learned how to stage manage i learned how to sell tickets i learned the marketing i learned uh how to assist the producer i learned how to assist the director and then to the point that I, I was an actor at that point, and I and I wanted to uh, also explore other other avenues of theater making. So that's all I learned in uh, the uh, this community in Jakarta um, until in I got involved in so many um, theater making activities, and I started to think that hey, maybe I want to direct one. Uh, because I always mm. have some, some, some ideas about. Oh, maybe we could do that. Maybe we could do this and everything. Every time that I watch a show, um, so uh, I did then, and I just basically wrote a proposal <laughs> to the board of directors of this community. It was basically just us. Uh, it's just you know, uh, like our friends. Um, uh, uh, the 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 director's panel trustees basically. yeah the the trustees, trustees right. kind of thing right um so i wrote uh proposals uh for them to just really elaborating what i want to do and then how the rehearsal is going to be how the vision is going to be the vision for the production um plan uh the marketing even <laughs> to the point of um you know all the idea of of we need to be the community that respect other uh other artists work um mm. so that all come that all that all came together in the production of west side story i, yes. I believe yes yes, yes. and yes. you were quite smart in getting that licensed i imagine yes. i think you said it was the first time that a Yes, a show of that stature had been licensed to a community theatre in Indonesia, which is yeah. which is incredible. Now, uh, intra, did you how, did you change much, or was it um, did did you re reframe it at all to fit for Indonesia the, the show, uh, or was it as per yeah. Broadway? No, as per Broadway, because when we, what we learn is that when we applied for the license, we have to follow every uh, single thing of the text and also the stage mm -hmm. direction that we were, we are not able to change anything. Um, mm -hmm. So we follow that um, and uh, basically, you know, uh, trying to make it uh happen in indonesia with volunteers yeah. so we involved yeah. 100 volunteers um of cast and that's tour. fantastic but uh, that's i mean that's an, in, an incredible achievement congratulations i mean it's so difficult i know in those environments where you've got volunteers who are giving up their time um yeah. it can be really really difficult to have to maintain 
sustained commitment in those circumstances. So, and, and you will have been leading that process. So I'm sure they were happy to follow somebody who would, with the, the drive and enthusiasm that, that you have. So, and I gather it was successful sellouts. It was, it was, it was yep. pleasant. I was pleasantly surprised. It was really successful. We were um, even being written in several of the top newspapers in Indonesia and everything. We got interviewed and it's, we basically got uh, the exposure was, was just to me as, you know, mind-boggling uh yeah but I think it's so let's jump let me let me jump you then from yeah. um from maria in indonesia um and tony to today <laughs> in glasgow so oh, wow. um what are you working on what are you working on at the moment in glasgow well i just graduated um uh, from the Royal Conservatory of Scotland. I got my master's in classical and contemporary text theater directing. Um, so my during during my training at the RCS, I uh, basically got connected to um, a lot of possibilities of learning how the theater making in the UK, how, how we develop theater um, well, in a vibrant industry like in the UK uh, is being done. And um, uh, so that's what I'm really interested in doing. So what I've been doing, because I just graduated, I kind of like trying to find work now. <laughs> so Well, this will help and, and I will do what I can. <laughs> to help so let's think of about we i call it the champagne referral or the cha champagne introduction if i was to okay. we could find somebody i know you and i've already had a look and we found 147 people in our network who who i can share the the, the names with so that you can reach out to them as a as a fellow member of the same group but what's the, what's the ideal first rung on that ladder for you and um, it would be hard to avoid London, I think, in the, in these circumstances. But um, what's what does the ideal role look like? What would be the job title? When where might it be? Um, well, um, well, actually, um, at the moment, I'm also developing new work. Um, but um, in order for me to learn um, about uh, to to have a complete understanding of how theater is run in in the UK and so that I can get some um, knowledge about it. Um, my plan would be having a um, having a gig or a job as an assistant director. Um, okay. So to be able to observe and to learn more and especially not just how theater is being made in the UK, but also how the how it is being run um, in, 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 in theater companies um, yeah. because we don't have that in Indonesia. So these are the learning lessons that I want to bring back or want to grow the industry in Indonesia as well and foster more partnership between the two countries if possible. Mm. Um, so that's my, basically my aim, my goal, Your mission. My passion. Yeah, your mission. mission that's brilliant yeah. <laughs> check um check out the british council won't you if you haven't yeah. already done so because yeah. um i did some work with them it was a, a partnership kind of almost like a cultural exchange between yeah. the uk and and southeast asia um so the, then they probably do something similar i'm sure so but that's fantastic so you're a, a theater um what would be the word you're a thunderbolt about to hit the British theatre scene uh, <laughs> in your with everything you've learned and the experience that you've got and um, that combination of getting it done and um, your academic qualifications I'm sure there will be many people out there who would be it would welcome having you part of their team as an assistant director so um, I'm hoping when we publish this that will that will help so that's great we now understand what makes Vanita tick and what gets you <laughs> up in the morning now we're going to have a bit of fun if that's okay all right um and in true creative style i'm going to be asking you some questions um and we're going to try and paint the picture 
of, of you, okay, through the answers of these questions. So I should point out to everybody watching that you have had no warning about this, whatever. So um, this is going to be utterly off the cuff. So my first question to you is, do you have a favorite building? Favorite building, theater building? Any building. Oh, yes, I do. What's the, where, where what and where? <laughs> the National <laughs> Theater UK. I National love Theater it. on the yes, South Bank. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must connect with um, Sarah Hunt. She is um, oh. one of our full members and she's the former general manager at the theatre. Oh, the theater. that would be yeah. wonderful, yeah. She might be able to make some really useful introductions for you. So um, make sure, yeah, Sarah sometimes watches these as well. So we, we'll make sure. Okay, so I've got this picture of Fanita walking along the um, the South Bank. South Bank. <laughs> yeah. Um, underneath, um, and there's the Undercroft where I used to skateboard in the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> um and i've played um on many occasions uh, i'm a percussionist by training so oh. i i am um, I, i've performed in the royal festival hall many many times with london orchestras i'm a percussionist so it's mainly the triangle but i can picture you now wandering along the, the south bank there okay looking up as with aspirations for directing something at the national theater there you go. <laughs> That's, that's it that's accurate it. that's pretty yeah. much accurate yeah now um you sit down to watch the river flow past okay and you pull out a book from your your bag right mm. what's your favorite book oh no wow that's hard that's a lot um one favorite book yep or any favorite book or any current book or any book you'd find yourself rereading year after year it's the book I am reading now and savoring it because it's so beautifully written it's by John Greger um it's uh it's called all the lit all the little things that uh that we've never done hang on Ooh. but um let me check whether that's the the great like Sorry, it's John. Okay, if nobody speaks of remarkable thing, um, by John, okay. by John McGregor. John McGregor, if nobody yeah. speaks, if nobody speaks of remarkable things, that's a great title for a book, isn't it? It's beautifully written. Yeah, I, I came up with a lovely title. I they say everyone's got a novel in them, but. Fortunately, most people don't let it out. Um, I came up with the title and I just need to write the story. Um, oh. The title is The Dream Grocer of Utopia. The Dream, the dream Gross? The Dream Grocer, as in Green Grocer. Oh, the, Dream the Grocer. Dream, the Dream Grocer of Utopia. So it's a character oh, cool. who, who um, sells dreams in the perfect world you know but I haven't written Whoa. it yet so but I just love the sound of the title the dream because we say green grocer a lot in the UK but if you're the dream grocer that means you're the you're the, the purveyor of dreams and um, so you're selling dreams instead of vegetables so oh. so I haven't quite worked out where it's going going to go but it's probably going to be a little bit like cloud atlas lots of different Oh, cool. You know, yeah. scenarios. We'll see. Yeah. I, oh, I you have to write. You have I've got to write, to write it now. It now, write yeah. it now. <laughs> <laughs> so there you are, sitting on the South Bank with the National Theatre behind you, and you're re you're catching up on your John McGregor book. Mm. Okay, and you you stand up to stretch your legs, and you look back, and there's a big banner for a performance that's happening in the in the festival hall, and and it's a dance show. OK, yeah. now, in your ideal world, who would be on the stage? Do you have a favorite dancer or dance group or dance style? What would you look up to and think, oh, I'm going to go and see that? So uh, favorite dancer, uh, favorite group or or favorite style? Anything with Pina Bosch, I would go like no question. Okay. Um, uh, also, the group. I don't have one favorite dancer, but I do have 
that's um couple of groups that I always want to you know mm. be there when they when they do a performance one of them are frantic assembly mm. um and also you know anything any group that that uh that does Pina Bosch okay. um yeah you can have that choreography I would like yeah now I'm this there. is <laughs> now okay so that's that's where you are so far I can picture you there in the summer okay. sunshine okay and you and you've wandered up and you know that there's a, a performance Pina Bosch um is there that night and you're free so you've booked oh. the ticket okay um now you've been given the opportunity to spend a year soaking up and researching the culture of a different country okay all expenses paid theater focused if you wish okay um and you're but you can't be in the uk and you can't be in indonesia you've got to choose another country to go to all expenses paid um you're going to live with some you're going to be embedded in the community with uh, theater uh, people um and like an airbnb thing um and you've been given it, uh, plenty of money to work to, to live for a year but they want you to come back with them and do a presentation and probably write a book about the 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 the, the, the theater culture in that country which country would you choose japan japan yeah wow uh That's i'm a i'm a big uh fan of tadashi suzuki um uh, and um so if i could have that opportunity um in an ideal world that's where i want to spend it uh, okay. on. yeah so you're going you're flying there tomorrow okay oh. <laughs> um so you're going to get the the pina show in first and then you're going to be off to heathrow airport and flying to tokyo um <laughs> the next day okay um now when you arrive there um, you're introduced to the theatre hosts who are going to be looking after you while you're there. Um, and they want to take you out to see, to watch some sport. Oh, sport. <laughs> yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be Japanese sport. It can be any sport you like. And they say, well, what would you like to go to? So what it, do you have a favourite sport as either a participant or a spectator? sports i'm not big into sports but i always enjoy watching tennis match okay um yeah i think tennis match and also um basketball um, yeah they and, like a bit of basketball in japan i think yeah yeah okay but I like, yeah but i uh, i think uh, but and also probably because I spent a year uh, um, in the USA when I was young and um, baseball is such a huge uh, sport over there in that mm. state so yeah. I, I kind of enjoyed watching yeah they love baseball in Japan as well so you you get to a good game okay <laughs> now the, one of the um, <laughs> one of the conditions of your year-long trip is that you limit your musical intake to one musical genre for the whole of the year, okay? Because they want to study the impact of that on you. Mm. So you can choose one type of music, but that's the, all you're allowed to listen to for the whole year. What genre will you pick? Uh, there will be soul and blues. Oh, that's one. Well, it's always the same genre. <laughs> yeah, you, you can probably get away with that. Certainly, you can have souls. So, are there any artists that come to mind that you would be listening to if you were uh, limited to soul and blues? No, I don't have like a specific artist, but I. Um, I think you might have to include Aretha Franklin in there and probably some, uh, Stevie Wonder and <laughs> Marvin Gaye. <laughs> Marvin Gaye. Oh, someone posted someone posted on YouTube recently, or I think it was on YouTube. It might have been Spotify, but they stripped out his voice for sexual healing. And oh. and it's 
absolutely raw it hadn't been edited no echo nothing and it's the most incredible thing you've ever heard it's so right you know that, is it in youtube i have to I think so it. Yeah, yeah marvin marvin gay sort of uh isolated i think you would search for marvin gay isolated yeah. and you'll find something okay so that's good so we've got marvin gay spinning around there in your head while you're out on your year in um japan now, your friends also say that they'd like to take you to a gallery. Um, and that there is a ma it's a magical gallery, gallery, uh, gallery in um, Japan, uh, in Tokyo or Kyoto or wherever you are. Um, and they've said that you can specify which artist you get to see. So they can create a gallery uh, visit for you with your favorite visual artist and all of their works are on the wall. Who who are you going to choose? It's also Japanese artists, which actually inspired my latest production uh, in Glasgow. Um, mm. Her name is Chiarus uh, Shiota. Um, okay. She, um, so the last production that I did said that I um, staged a play from the British writer Nick Payne. Uh, the play itself is called Incognito. It is mm -hmm. a play about the uh, brain and memory and how it really shape us into human being and and, and uh, how we connect to other people and everything. And so, join I, I saw this um, artist that which is Chiaru Shiota and her installation of the red yarn connecting to who we are as a human being that's a symbolism and and it mm -hmm. also connects to my cultural background because mm -hmm. in uh, Indonesia uh, the the term of uh, when we say that we when we connect to people when we connect ourselves when we connect our understanding to our surroundings mm. and ourselves internally and externally we call it benang merah which is the red yarn so that's basically my um uh, inspiration from the japanese artists and also my cultural background and in, in when i'm that's that's lovely because i often i often um feel as though we have a golden thread running through the arts and culture network we have no borders in our community we have mm. no national religious or political affiliation um it's uh, it, it's 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 great so i love that so was it was it um what was the name minotu uh, chiharu Minoto? chiharu shiota let me put his or her yeah, uh the spelling the in so yeah have a look um what was the second okay. name was it ah there we go yeah chiharu shiota and for the um for those company. people, for the benefit of, yeah, for the benefit of those who are listening, it's C H I H A R U, and then it's Shiota S H I O T A. Just in case we forget to put it in the text, I'm going to have a look at these. Yeah, there's lots of red going on there. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. Now, the next night, um, they're going to take you into theatre land. Okay. Okay. Um, and you can choose a play or a musical your favorite and they will produce it for you that day and and you'll be the guest of honor at the front of the dress circle um, and you can have any play or musical you wish what would you opt for uh I, would it be the play that i'm directing or the... not no you're there as a guest um oh. anything you want to see so your favorite play or musical of all time will be produced before your eyes that would be if it's like um uh, my favorite musical of all time. That would be West Side Story, um, and the play um that I would always want to see in front of my eyes, like live. Um, is <laughs> this is out? Of, this is really left field. It's Knives in Hands by David Harrower, the Scottish playwright that I've been okay. reading, even before I come. To, to 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 Scotland. I didn't even know that David Harrow is actually a Scottish playwright. And I did um his um his uh his his play in Indonesia 
um, as a part of the gender-based um, violence um, against gender-based violence movement um, mm -hmm. in Indonesia and uh, his play that I staged for that uh, was Black Bird by David Harrower. Oh, I actually got the poster over here. Oh, wow. There we go. Yeah. This is, David Harrower. This is part of my 16, uh, of the 16 days of activism against gender-based yep. violence that I staged uh, David Harrower Blackbird. I don't. I don't. I don't even know that. Um, uh, uh, he's from Scotland, and then I would eventually go to Scotland and learn. Mm -hmm. it's just, you should uh, track him down and meet him. I should, Is he still I with should. us? You. Oh, Talking yeah, yeah, of which, yeah. um, <laughs> he lives in Glasgow. I met Berns I, I met Bernstein. <gasps> no, really? Yeah. Wow. I was at the Guild. I was at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London in the early 80s, and wow. we were doing a performance of, of his mass. Do you know his mass, the Bernstein mass? Mm, it's worth, mm, no, no. It doesn't get performed very often because it requires enormous resources. Um, so we, we did a performance of it at the Guildhall School, and um, he came and conducted one of the rehearsals, and uh, I got to meet him briefly because I was oh, playing wow. timpani, and uh, that was great. You know, you often say um, you met um, your there are some maestro, people, yeah, yeah. You know, or you, I've say, I've shaken hands with somebody who shook hands with Beethoven, you know, or something. But, um, but yeah, that was that was great. It was fantastic, and just the, you know, the energy in in pieces like Candide and just yeah. incredible stuff. So yes, that was great. Now the next night, so here you are. Let's recap, okay. <laughs> So you've been strolling along the South Bank um, <laughs> near the National Theatre because you love that. You've been reading your John McGregor. Um, you've been to see Pina, the dance show. Um, you've decided you're going to Japan for this research year. You've watched some baseball. You're happy to have some, um, well, what was your music? I can't remember. Um, oh, blues, blues and soul. And yeah. soul. Blues yeah. and soul. Um, you, you've had um, a complete gallery show of Chiotta. Uh, yeah, sure um, you've done the play by um, by the Scottish playwright, and you've you've done West Side Story. And the next night, you can go and watch a film, and you can have any film you like with oh. your new friends. Um. Any film I like, oh, there's so many. It's really hard. This one is hard. But if I would just want to settle in and then just enjoy the experience of watching movie and then just be involved in it and then um um and and feel the message of the the the, the filmmaker is trying to convey, that would be a film by Wong Kar Wai. It's also an inspiration of my my latest short film that I did during my uh, study at the RCS. Um, uh, his his films it's it's it it presents with a um, uh, with a very bold and uh, highly saturated color, and it's um, always have a very um, interesting what's the name role. what's the name again of the what's wong the name of the filmmaker, filmmaker is wong kar wai he's a chinese oh, filmmaker yeah okay. and was there a specific movie the, in the mood uh, for love in the mood for love that's right there we go brilliant yeah love it okay so we've got <laughs> you now I painted this picture, which I love, which is great. So you've watched the film and you're doing your year. Now, that's it. Apart from one final question, apart from me today, yeah. who was the last person to make you laugh? The last person that makes me laugh? Oh, uh, several people. Mm. Um, uh, no, do you need names? <laughs> well, no, no, no. If you have someone, it could be a TV show you've seen. It could be a friend or a relative. Anything. Oh. So. Okay. 
because I'm easily amused as a person. So I I laugh. <laughs> I laugh. I laugh pretty much even when people think that it's nothing to laugh about sometimes. And I just find the humor in, in <laughs> everyday life. I, I'm, I'm just really easy to be amused. My cohorts, my classmates, um, some of them really, you know, crack me up. There you go. Um, and also, I, I, I love the, uh, I just watched this comedy show by Daniel Sloss, also Scottish um, comedian. And yeah, it's, it's also good. You know, really good. That was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. For that. We, we now, we, we all now know Funita a bit better than we'd, we would otherwise have done. That's why it's a bit of an icebreaker. Now, this one's a bit more fast paced. Um, oh, no. It probably won't be. We'll we'll rush. We'll we'll rattle through it. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you two options, and you have to choose one or the other. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? I'm not allowed to think. I just have to instinctively answer. Instinct. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tea or coffee? Uh, coffee. Radio or television? Television. High heels or sneakers? Sneakers. Car or motorcycle? Car. Horror or comedy? Horror. <laughs> Love it. Concert hall or sports stadium? Concert hall. Cat or dog? Cat. Well, I always thought I was a dog person. I oh, know. Uh, <laughs> test the water or dive in at the deep end? Oh, yep. Oh, test the water. Okay. Orange juice, bits or no bits? What is that? Sorry? Bits or no bits in your orange juice? Pulp. Oh, uh, pulp. Library or museum? Library. Beethoven or Mozart? Oh, Beethoven. Shower or bath? Oh, bath. <laughs> uh, cooking or being cooked for? Cooking. Fiction or non-fiction? Fiction. Patterned or plain? Patterned. Sand or snow? Sand. Shopping online or in store? Oh, in store. Reggae or salsa? Salsa. Indoors or outdoors? Indoor. Android or iPhone? Android. <laughs> Start immediately or wait till the last minute? Start immediately. Science or history? Ooh. Oh, oh, this is hard. I'll go with mm. science. New York or Los Angeles? New York, hands down. White or black? Black. Square or circle? Square? With rounded corners like those ones behind you. Yeah. <laughs> early morning or early hours? Early morning. Messy desk or tidy desk? Tidy desk. Plan it or wing it? In the middle. I, pl <laughs> I plan it and then at the, uh, when, in, in the midst of it, I wing it easily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bedroom door open or closed? Uh, what, what? I'm sorry? Bedroom door open oh, or closed? Closed. Toilet roll over or under? Oh, interesting. Never really think about uh over. Mm -hmm. Zombies or vampires? Vampire. Red or white wine? Um, uh, red wine. Batman or Superman? Batman. Numbers or words? Words. I'm not a number person. <laughs> Mild or spicy? Spicy. Opera or chamber music? Oh, opera. 
whiskey or rum? Rum. Um, stripes or spots? Spots. Gold or silver? Silver. Um, photography or painting? I can't. Both of them I love. Um, painting, though, mm. if it has to be fast. Um, ooh, Hemingway or Fitzgerald? Oh, Hemingway. Jane Austen or Charles Dickens? Do I have to choose? What if I don't like both? Oh, if you don't like both. Hmm. Or, well, it's not that I'll I don't suggest like another. <laughs> yeah. But I don't read much. Okay, we'll let you pass that one. Um, <laughs> Shakespeare or che Shakespeare or Chekhov? Oh, that is hard. Um, mm -hmm. Shakespeare. And finally, see the future or change the past. Change the past. Oh. Okay. Because I don't want to see the future. I don't want to see the future. Most people say that they'd rather see the future because the past is gone and, you know, but if, if by changing the past, you're changing the future, exactly. it's future, I guess. <laughs> that was wonderful. Fonita, thank you so wow, much for doing this. Wow, this is fun, Mark. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Yeah. I'm, I'm, it, it's a lovely way. It's an icebreaker for those who watch the video and then, and then comes, <laughs> I've had the pleasure of meeting you now. Um, they haven't so they'll get the chance to do that but um so thank you so much for being one of our four members and for being a good sport and taking part in this um uh this will be pro um embedded in a profile about you on the website and then we'll let everybody know about that via via the linkedin group so for now thank you so much Juanita. thank you mark really such a pleasure